Hi, my name is Emily, and this is the Delight Knits podcast episode 11. Today is Sunday, April 10th of 2022, and I am coming to you from Southwest Arkansas. It is a gorgeous day today. I'm sitting next to the window to get some nice light, so hopefully that works out well. Um, But... I am coming on here to talk to you about a couple of finished objects, a couple of whips, and to talk about a future cast on that I have planned. Um, So I guess let's just get started. My first finished object is a pair of socks you saw me starting on last time, and I completely forgot to grab my sock blockers, but I'm not going to pause and go get them. So. These are my scrappy socks that I am using leftovers for. And I used up almost every single bit of leftover. Actually, not almost every single bit. There's quite a bit still left over. Um, but I used every bit of this light blue, every bit of this light purple. There you go. Every bit of the brown and every bit of the darker purple. So you can tell where I had um, used up as much as I did. So I did a long tail cast on for 64 stitches, a two by two rib at the top, and I believe there's 20 rounds. And then I did 12 rounds, 12 rounds, 10, 10, used up every last bit of this leftover. And what I did was since these leftovers were so small and they're all from prior different projects, same base, um, they started out, or, and I also used them in my Honey I Shrunk the Stash shawl you saw last time as a finished object in episode 10. But so all of these colors had quite a bit left over and I knit them concurrently so I made sure they matched because they do match. Um, and so I would knit a little bit of this, knit a little bit of this. Or knit this cuff, knit this cuff, and so on and so forth. When I got to the brown, I actually took the ball of yarn and got both ends of it and knit to where I had them connected by the ball of yarn. So knit until there was, they were like this, I could hold up the string of yarn and there was this much between them and I cut it. So I have enough, had enough to weave in. And so I did that with the, um, light purple here and the light blue and the dark purple and then I had plenty of leftovers of these three colors which you'll see again um that I just did evenly to make them match I think there's 20 rounds and 20 rounds so I did a heel flap and gusset um but yeah this is my first pair of scratch scrappy socks that I finished in the last two weeks. So now I can put them in my drawer to wear them because I have been avoiding washing my knitted socks and I have very few left to wear before I need to wash them all. My second pair of finished object or second finished object is another pair of scrappy socks. And this pair (laughs) does not match. So I started out knitting just one at a time not concurrently like I did the last pair and I knew I wanted to do a shorty pair so I did the cuff I did two same thing 64 and stitches two by two rib for 20 I think this one I did 15 rounds and then I did five rounds in the stocking knit up the blue and I knit all the way and did my normal foot and everything um and finished off with the blue toe and then I did not look at how much yarn I had left I didn't really care So I finished off the pink about here and did the sand color to finish off. So that part is in the foot anyways, unless you're wearing sandals. So nobody should know. I'm not, I don't, won't wear these in sandals, but if I'm wearing like tennis shoes or something like that, they won't be seen. So who, nobody's going to know, nobody's going to care. It's a pair of socks out of leftovers that we would have just sat there forever anyways so those are my two finished objects um and that is what I've been knitting on like on our commutes to work and during my lunch break 
at work. Um, so I got quite a bit done on that. I also, so to continue on with the leftovers, I have another pair of socks with those same leftovers. And this will be the last pair of socks with all of those leftovers. And these will be for my sister. So these are toe up and then I'm striping them. You can kind of see my jog on that side. But they're same thing, 64 stitches, but this time I'm doing toe up and so I could use every last bit of leftovers and make them as long as possible. And because I'm doing toe up, I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel, which is why my sister will be getting these socks because she prefers that heel and I do not. I love the short row or the heel flap and guess it for fit for me. So I've got both of these there and on the inside is I've already split the yarn in half and on the inside I have my leftovers oh I'm dropping stitches here I have what's left so there we go that's how much I have left of each of these I need to weigh how much it takes me to do around so I can know when I need to start the ribbing these will likely be shorty socks though, with having that much left. And that's how much left, like each. This is one, and then this one has the same thing. Let's see if I can get these out. So, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> but that is what those are, and so I will plan on finishing these, and instead, I'm gonna take a break from socks after this for my commute and lunch break knitting and go to knitting washcloths again because I said I was gonna knit once a week one week and I have not even touched them let's see but so these stitch markers yeah stitch markers I have are from sassafras knits as well as the bag that that's been holding in. I love it. It's the perfect sock size bag. What's in there is my sock light bulb stitch markers because I pretty much only use these for socks so it stays in my bag. And then my little notions pouch which has everything else I need in it. Um, I've got a tape measure, my two 40 inch circular, yeah, 40 inch circulars, my needles that are forever years old, the rest of my progress keepers and stitch markers hanging on these, um, and some tufted woolens, hand balm. I love this stuff, especially the chai spice. It's one of my favorites. All of that stays in my sock bag. And I love it. So those will be finished if tomorrow, if not early this week and my dogs come in. And these will be finished either tomorrow, Monday or, or Tuesday. And then I will work on the dish cloths. So that is my first whip that I've been working on. My second whip is my big project and has not gotten all that much love this week. And you saw it last week. I've got a progress keeper in from where I was last week. It is the newspaper pullover by Hoagie Locatelli. Last time I was just about to split for the sleeves. I was just starting on the pink. And so I've done all of the that pink stripe and I think I'm close to finishing up this gray stripe but I'm loving this I tried it on yesterday and it fit really really well so I've actually done quite a bit for two weeks but, yep there's the front and there's the back you can see there's a little neck shaping and I will come back and pick up and do a collar but I am so enjoying this it is an all-over brioche and it is great. 
I'm really excited to get that finished up. But this is being held in my By the Bay Co. bag. Or By the Bay Bag Co. That's what that is. And this pin is um, from Kay's Crochet Creations, I think. And that's who made the stitch mark or progress keeper on this. And actually, I'm using stitch markers from Sassafras Knits on this as well. I have an eight pack of these. Um, and so those are my sweater ones. But the yarns I'm using for that is, let's see if I grabbed, yeah. So the gray is, I got a leaf. Mirror and on the Fragrant Rose Base by Ruby and Roses yarn. And the maroon pink-ish color is Sangria by Ruby and Rose's yarn as well on her soft rose base. And they're very similar. And actually, she's just started dyeing yarn again after her big move. And she should have an update here soon. Um, yeah, that's all I've been working on. Not too much because life with working and two kids is still we're still adjusting um but I do have a future cast on planned I am planning on casting on the boxy chevrons by Suzanne Summer um the ladies at Arkansas Yarn Co. are kind of doing a knit along with this for the Arkansas Yarn Crawl. They hope to have everybody who's going wear this and take a big old group picture. I don't know if I'll be able to ever go, if I will be able to make it. I think that's on a Saturday. Um, but I've actually had this project in my favorites on Ravelry for a while. And so I figured if, why not go ahead and cast on with other people um, during this knit along. So I am actually planning on buying yarn or not buying yarn, dyeing my yarn for this. Um, a couple weeks ago, you saw I had bought some bare yarn from Wool to Dye For. I bought an 8020 base. Um, so for my size, I think I will need, let me see. Uh, I think I will need maybe three to four skeins of yarn. This, as you can see on the picture here, it is a very large um, oversized boxy sweater. So the sleeves are knit flat and then you seam them and pick them up in the round. Um, the girls on We Show Needles have actually talked about this because they're knitting them right now. It's actually a pretty interesting construction and I wasn't sure I was going to knit after hearing them talk about how it was a weird construction a while ago. I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. But then they talked about it a little more and I think Jessa on the Arkansas Yarn cast um, even talked about it and showed it and I was like, okay, I can do that. Because my biggest concern is I think the pattern has it at 16 inches of positive ease which is a ton, it's a ton. So, um, oh, 16 to 24 inches of positive ease. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, and I, so I knit a boxy sweater by Hoagie Locatelli a while back. That's actually my first sweater that I knit for myself out of yarn that I dyed for myself. Um, and I'm not the biggest fan of that super boxy fit, but the way this is constructed, I think I can easily dwindle that down. I mean, the smallest size that would be what I knit for the 16 to inches of ease. But I think I can do the math and do less than that the way this is constructed um so y'all I will take y'all along with me and we'll see how that goes but help me pick out some colors for dyeing for this 
So my idea is actually to do kind of opposite of her where she's got the light at the main color, which is where the body is and the, I guess, CC on this, um, the contrast color on the sleeves. Um, those are the same color. Um, I was gonna do that in a dark color and then do a speckled for the sleeves. And my plan was to do this Cabernet color. I'm showing you this in my shawlography. Um, but I was gonna do this Cabernet color here as the main color and then kind of do a sand with the Cabernet speckles on it. Got some hair in it. Um, but do the dark Cabernet as the main color with the body and then for the chevrons on the sleeve, do the sand with some Cabernet speckles because I wear a lot of that color and I think I will wear, get more wear out of the sweater when it's those colors. Um, I also love this teal, but I don't think I'll wear it as much. So that's my plan. Let me know what you think um, in the comments. So this is actually, so my shawlography, which was the 2021 West Knits Mystery Knit Along. And this is actually my most worn shawl. I love it. It's super soft. It's 100% merino. Um, and it is yarn that I dyed myself. It's all tonals, which is why I'm using it as a reference because I don't know if I still have the, I don't think I have leftovers for out of that yarn, but I did knit my son out of a, a hat out of it. Yeah, I think those those are my options for my boxy chevron. Is the Cabernet as the main color with the sand as a contrast with the Cabernet speckles. So let me know what you think. There. Yeah. Yeah, let me know what you think about that. But I love this shawl. That's what I'm planning on casting on. I think I will, I get the Monday after Easter off and my kids still have daycare. So I think I'm gonna send them off to daycare anyways and take the day to myself and dye yarn cause it'll be so much easier to dye without either of them here. Um, but yeah, and I think that is it. That's my next big project planned. Um, don't, I'll probably cast on even though my newspaper pullover is not done because I think last year the Arkansas yarn crawl was in late July. I don't know if they've announced a date for it yet, um, but I will plan on going at least one day to the store in Arkadelphia, Knit Unto Others, and Arkansas Yarn Co. in Malvern. Um, because those are the two closest to me. And in the summer I get half Fridays, so I can actually leave my kids in daycare one Friday afternoon and go without them. I can't spend all day there, obviously, but it gives me time to browse without kids <laughs> and the worry of where they're at and all that kind of stuff. So that's all that's going on in my knitting world. Life-wise, it's just same old, same old. We had a nice quiet weekend. We moved my son from being in our room in a pack and play to his room, and that's actually done really well this last week. Um, we are trying to spend more time outside as it's warming up um, and loving every bit of it, except for the pollen season because everything is yellow right now. <laughs> outside it's part of part of living within the pine trees but i hope everybody has had a great week um and happy knitting